Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to see how to create an extremely realistic destruction quite easily with Typho Pro. And especially with the new multifracture modifiers that use the Prism engine, which really allow us to create incredible destruction. You can see here an example of what can be done quite easily with a very simple setup, which doesn't require mixing multiple raw noise fractures and spawn to add debris. You can find this scene directly on my Patreon, Orgamode, along with all my other projects, so feel free to check it out. Also, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, it helps the channel a lot. Okay, let's go for the tutorial. Okay, so now we are into this max, and for this example, I will use a sphere to show you how the multifactor works. So, I recreate a sphere here, yeah. put the sphere maybe here, increase a bit again the scale, go to the subdivision and increase a bit the segment, maybe 100. Okay, perfect like this. I will know. Create a Typeflow setup. Here, Typeflow. Open editor, move the window here on the right to see the sphere. I cannot create a brass object. Pick the sphere. I don't need the original sphere. And now what we want to do is to create the physics interaction. So I will add a physics shape. Physics shape. You can see here that the physics works, so it's very cool. What I love to do is just to go back here in the type flow setup, go to setting and increase the time step to have a better simulation. So one, two. Okay, great. Now what we want to do is to create the destruction effect. So I will add the multifactor, go to frame zero, add the multifactor operator here. Okay. And as you can see, we already have the fracture here and it's not very beautiful. As you can see, we only want the fracture at the collision. So I will go back to the physics shape. Mm, what I love to do is just increase a bit the bounce. And go down in the menu, go to start penetration and change to sticky starting penetration. Okay. And now, as you can see, it's perfect. We already have something very cool, but we want something very more realistic and detailed. So we'll play with the multifracture setting. I can go here to multifracture. Okay, we can see here the engine, prism. You can see here the mode. As you can see here, we have a lot of mode. Bond, edge, hull, planar, radial. If I change maybe to radial, you can see that we'll have something maybe like more wood effect. It could be very cool. We have here the planar. Planar is a bit like the Voronoi, but just a bit different. If you only want to affect the convex face of your object, you can change to L here, Hull Fracture. It's also very cool. Okay, but for this example, we will use Voronoi. So I can go back to mode and switch to Voronoi Fracture. I can now go on the display. And as you can see here, we have a lot of information and I don't like to see all the things. So I will only keep the factory intersection. So deactivate mesh and point. Okay, great. I can now go to the factory point and here you can see the count. So the count will be the number of factors. So if I increase to maybe 50, you can see that we have more fracture. Okay, that's great. What I love to do to start is just start with a very low value. So I will go to 10. Okay. If you want, you can enable cluster. Cluster will again divide your Voronoi by the number of point count. So I can enable here cluster. I will change the point count to one and add a lot of variation, maybe 80. Okay. As you can see in the raw noise, we don't have something very clear, but we have a big noise. So if you want to fix that, we just have to go here in the factor noise. You have two factor noise. So I open the A and I will decrease the value to zero. So voila. As you can see here, we have something very clean. Okay. 
great. I cannot go by to the factor point, so if you want, you can add again a secondary cluster, but not necessary for the moment. I will now go to fracture mesh. And in the fracture mesh, we can see here the segment size. And if I activate here the wireframe, we can see here the subdivision of the face. So for this project, we want something with a lot of detail. So I will go here to frame zero and decrease the segment size to a very low value, 0.2. And of course, if you decrease this value, don't forget to increase the max segment. So I will set a very high value. Okay, I will just go forward in the animation. And as you can see here, lot of subdivision. It will be very useful to add a lot of detail. I cannot close the fracture mesh. Go back to the frame zero. And now what we want to do is to create a very cool noise to create a unique look for the destruction of the sphere. So. I will go back to the fracture noise A and we'll play here with the value. So I will maybe decrease the scale to a value, to a low value, maybe 10. You can see here the noise preview and of course we'll increase a bit the trend. So maybe with a very, very low value, 0.2. Okay, change nothing, maybe more, 1. Okay, we start to see something very interesting. Two. Okay, I think it's a good start. It's up to you to play with the strength and the scale to create the look you want for your fractures. Okay, so now I will launch a simulation to see what we have for the destruction. And as you can see, we start to have something very cool here. We have a lot of detail. It's very cool. It's very cool like this. Love the result. What you can do if you want to add again more detail in the look of your fracture here is to add a displace. So I will go back to the frame zero, add a displace. For the displace, we'll play with the noise. You can, if you want, play with the texture. So you just have to create your texture and link the texture here to the slot. But I love to play only with the noise. So I will switch to noise. For the noise, I love to change the fractal to the ridge here. Decrease the scale to a low value, maybe try with 4. Okay, you can see here the preview. And maybe increase again. And the octave to 10. Okay. For the amount, it's just random value, so we will see what we have. We can see here that we have something very strange here. Also have the displacement on this surface and we don't want. So we just have to go here and enable the material ID. Okay, it's better like this, but you can see that we still have this strange look here. So I will just activate the reduced strength near border distance to maybe 0.1 and I will set a very low strength. We don't need a high strength, so I will set a very low value, so 0.015, I think. Okay, so it's perfect here. So now let's see what we have. Yeah, it's great. Okay. It's very cool like this. If you want, you can again go back to the multi-fracture, go to the fracture mesh here and decrease again the size. If you want to get more detail, maybe 0.15. And you can see we have again more detail, but I think it's maybe, maybe too much. So maybe we'll try with this value. Okay. We have something here very cool, but now what we want to do is to add again more detail. So what we can do is to go here to the fracture point and in the fracture point, not the fracture point, but the fracture of Voronoi. Here we can see the noise, but we can add another fracture noise iteration to add again more detail. So I can just increase the value of the iteration. So maybe too. And basically what I will have is the same pattern of the destruction, but with a different phase. So I will click in enter to the value of two. And here, as you can see, we will have again more destruction here, more small part. 
it will be very cool. As I said, it's a different phase. So you can control here the noise phase. Maybe if I try 10, we can see that we have a different pattern. I will go back to the original value. I think the pattern was better. Okay. And now I will relaunch the simulation. And as you can see, we have a lot of detail, a lot of small parts. It's very cool. A lot of details here. So playing with the iteration is a very cool way to add more detail, but I will show you the second way to add again more, more, more detail. So I will go back to frame zero. I will just deactivate the setup for the moment. Copy the multi fracture past and I will change here the Voronoi mode to the edge fracture. I can now go to fracture edge here, you are fracture plane two. In fracture plane, I will change nothing. I will just go here in the fracture edges and play with the probability. I think for the fracture edges and for the fracture corner, 100 is maybe too much. So I like to change the value to maybe the half. 50 and 50. I can now move the multi just between the multi one and the displays. And I will now reactivate. And I can now relaunch the simulation. We can see here a lot of details. It's very cool. To finish, we can apply a texture if you want. So we just open the material editor. Here. We can now create a material general multi sub object. We only need two materials, one for the inside and one for the outside. So I will just activate here V-Ray. Okay. Create a V-Ray material. Duplicate the material and I can now change the color. I will now switch to the standard mode. Select my Tyclo setup and apply this material to my Tyclo setup. Change to white. Yeah, it's amazing like this. Okay guys, so that's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Now you've got everything you need to create this kind of extremely realistic destruction effect quite easily. You can of course grab this project on my Patreon, Ogre Mode, if you are interested. Don't hesitate to give me a thumb up if you like my work and feel free to follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you want. See you very soon for a new tutorial. Bye!